In this video, we're going to look at the chirality or stereochemistry of amino acids. So every single amino acid that we talked about in the previous video, except glycine, are what we called optically active. That is, if we take light and polarize it, they will rotate. And molecules that rotate and polarize light, we call those molecules chiral. Now, a chiral molecule um, cannot be superimposable on the mirror image of itself. We call it asymmetric. Um, the way to understand this in a non-chemistry term is that if you take your left and right hand and look at your palms face out, you cannot superimpose your hands on each other, even though your hands are mirror images of each other. While if you take a flask and you take the mirror image of a flask, you can superimpose the two images on each other. So we would say your hands are chiral, the flask is non-chiral. And for our purposes in biochemistry, um, especially when it comes to proteins, uh, a protein or amino acid is chiral if its carbon alpha has four different molecules or groups attached to it. We call that molecule chiral. While if it does not have four different things attached to it, it is achiral, not chiral. So glycine, the side chain of glycine is hydrogen, so it is the only amino acid that is not chiral. Now, we, our, our term for mirror images that are not superimposable are enantiomers. So let's look at this molecule, carbon, chlorine, fluorine, bromine, hydrogen. If you take the mirror image of this compound, you cannot superimpose it on itself. Uh, we call these enantiomers. Now, when we talk about, um, or when we want to show chiral compounds, uh, generally, what chemists will do is use a Fisher projection. Um, so we have two different projections here, geomet geometric, uh, geometric excuse me, formula and the Fisher projection. So if you see molecules that look like this, wedges mean that the molecule is coming out of the screen towards you and dashed lines are going uh, away from you. While in the Fisher projection, it's um, the horizontal lines that are coming towards you and the vertical lines that are going away from you. And for chiral compounds, biochemists will give these a designation of D or L. Now, in organic chemistry, you have heard of R and S. Biochemists don't use that. We use D or L. And it all has to do with comparing the stereochemistry of glycerol aldehyde to whatever you are interested in. Um, for amino acids, I will show you the trick for that. It's called the corn rule. So for amino acids, you put it in your Fisher projection and you start with uh, COO minus. And if you can spell the word corn, C-O-R-N, by going clockwise, then it's an L amino acid. While if you have to spell corn going counterclockwise, it's a D amino acid. And over 99, I would say 99.9% .9 of amino acids here on planet Earth are L amino acids. So when humans do chemistry in a lab, um, and if they're making chiral compounds, uh, you usually make a racemic mixture, which means that 50% um, of each enantiomer is found in your compound. Uh, but inside of living organisms, inside of cells, biochemical processes hardly ever make racemic mixtures. They usually only create one product 100% uh, pure stereoisomer. 
And that's because the enzymes inside your body are incredibly specific um, for either L or D products. So all the enzymes in your bodies only work with L amino acids. Now, in nature, we do have some D amino acids. And for the most part, they make up the bacterial cell wall. And the reason for that is that it protects them from peptidases. A peptidase is an enzyme that cuts um, amino acids. And since 99.9% .9 of amino acids are L, if you do happen to have a D, peptidase won't work on those because it is looking to cut L amino acids. Now, when it comes to drugs, like I said, inside the lab, we make racemic mixtures. And usually that's not a problem. Uh, take ibuprofen. Ibuprofen has a chiral carbon right here. And when you make ibuprofen in the lab, you make 50% of D and you make 50% of L. Uh, one version um, helps with pain relief. The other version doesn't do anything. And so in your ibuprofen pill, you have equal percentages of each ibuprofen molecule. You take both. While other drugs like thalidomide or a thalidomide in the 50s this was a sedative one version it has a chiral carbon right here one version of this is a sedative the other version produces very severe birth defects um, and so when patients in the 50s if you're pregnant if you took this as a sedative you're taking both versions and you would have uh, your unborn child would have severe birth defects. So this is no longer on the market. So that is something uh, we have to test for inside the lab when we're developing new drugs. If they have chiral centers, um, is, the, is one version of that drug gonna be harmful to us? And that's it for this video. I will see you in the next video.